we often think about care as something universal, something fundamental. It's a popular way we speak about care. You know, some of the unexamined presumptions about care is that it's universal, essential, and that every other thing is noise. That when you get right down to it, everyone knows how to be in care. This is not the totalizing way we speak about care, but it seems to be a dominant popular way we speak about care. But what it means to care for our body minds, notice the way that I phrase the word here, not bodies or minds, I, I hardly see them. I, I find it very difficult to see the body as estranged from the mind, okay? What it means to care for our body minds to hold and be held is speculative, ambiguous, partial, emergent, and struck through with trouble, right? A very practical, vulnerable example is some of you who know me and my work know that I'm constantly centering my son who is um, on the spectrum, the autistic spectrum. And um, he's seven years old. And my becoming father with him has been rendered through very vulnerable valley moments and shadows. Um, there was once a point in our relationship where against my theology, against my practice, against my public face and persona, I wanted to fix him. I felt that something got in the way of our relationship and I was anxious about his future. Would he have a relationship? Would he be cared for? Would he be bullied by others? Would he have friends? So in a sense, my care, which I figured as my embrace of his very young body, started to become asphyxiating. And this is my question here. At what point does care become not just an embrace, but a form of asphyxiation? A strangling. I write that because care is at once speculative and pragmatic, it is largely unsaid. It is not merely reducible to the things we do, I do or you do. It is the shape of doing, the shape of our experiences, the things that are permissible in the environment, the things that are unsaid but are available somewhere in the room. Care is all of these things and more. Of course, I do not mean to suggest that there are care is a monolith. I want to be very clear in saying that there are myriad forms of care today. And each emerges in a world that is marked by, in our world, marked by colonial pasts and presence. And so, as you might know, there's a lot of discourse around racialized trauma and intergenerational trauma the trauma of industrial growth and development, and pandemics, the rise of artificial intelligences. Care has to be situated in a material world where all these things obtain. So care is uneven, it is multilinear, it is punctuated and disrupted. But while this is so, there is a discernible field of concern. And this is my focus in this brief exploration today that there is a discernible field of concern that is gaining prominence with its emphasis on healing, well-being, and feeling good. Some experts call it the global wellness industry. It's a $5.6 trillion industry. That was its worth in 2022. This global wellness, wellness industry includes psychotherapeutic modalities, wellness, tourism, people on screens telling you that there are richer alternatives for how to eat and be healthy and feel good with yourself. It even includes notions of meditative uh, peace and reaching some kind of unity or entanglement with the universe. This is the global wellness industry. There's some data here that it's projected to be worth around 8.5 trillion dollars in 2027. So it's huge. It's disturbingly huge. And the fact that it tracks along the lines of capitalist measurements makes it 
even more disturbing to me. Which leads to my question. Could it be that the ways that the shape of care incarcerates us, could it be that the ways that the shape of care incarcerates us into domains of harm is part of the trouble? That, that question is incomplete. But could it be that we are incarcerated in the shape of care that is emerging in the world? Could it be that care constitutes a territory of harm?